Welcome back to this series on neural network programming with PyTorch. In this video, we will start to dig in deeper with PyTorch itself by exploring PyTorch tensors. Without further ado, let's get started. PyTorch tensors are the data structures we'll be using when programming neural networks in PyTorch. The first lines of code that must be written are usually data preprocessing routines. And the ultimate goal of this data preprocessing is to transform whatever data we're working with into tensors that can fuel our neural networks. I'm here in a notebook now, and I want to start by introducing the torch.tensor class. PyTorch tensors are instances of the tensor class which lives in the top level torch package. We can create a torch tensor using the class constructor like so. And we get the output for this code. Notice that we checked the type of our tensor T and indeed it is an instance of the torch.tensor PyTorch class. And also at the top, we imported torch and we imported NumPy. Make sure you have those two imports. So we've created a tensor using no data. We'll get to creating tensors using data in just a second, but first I want to introduce three PyTorch tensor attributes. We've already seen tensor attributes like rank, axes, and shape in previous videos. Those are fundamental to tensors. They apply to all tensors. The attributes we'll see now are PyTorch related attributes that deal with PyTorch's implementation of tensors. We have a data type, a device, and a layout. For the data type, we can see that our type is torch.float32. And for our device, we can see that this tensor is on the CPU. And for the layout, our value is torch.strided. Let's look at the details for each one of these attributes. The data type or D type, which is torch.float32 in our case, specifies the type of data that's contained within the tensor. Tensors contain uniform numerical data with one of the following types. Notice how each type of data has a CPU and a GPU version. One thing to keep in mind about tensor data types is that tensor operations between tensors must happen with tensors of the same data type. The device, which is CPU in our case, specifies the device, which will either be a CPU or GPU, where the tensor's data is allocated. This determines where the tensor computations for the given tensor will be performed. PyTorch supports the use of multiple devices, and they are specified using an index like so. We can create a device with torch.device and then specify our first GPU. And we get the output for this device. We can see that the type is CUDA, which means the device is a GPU, and the index of zero tells us that, that it's the first GPU that we have. If we specified an index, say three or four, and we didn't have three or four GPUs on our system, then when we try to allocate a tensor to this device, then at that point, we would get an error. One thing to keep in mind about using multiple devices is that tensor operations between tensors must happen with tensors that exist on the same device. Using multiple devices is typically something we'll do as we become more advanced users, so there's no need to worry about that for now. Let's take a quick look at the layout. Our layout is strided. Strided just tells us how our tensors data is laid out in memory. It's the default and there's really no need to change it. And that's all we need to know about stride for now. The main takeaway from these tensor attributes is that as neural network programmers, we need to be aware of two things. Number one is that tensors contain data of a uniform type. And number two is that tensor computations between tensors depend on the type and the device. Let me show you a couple examples to make this solid. We'll look first at the data type. And this shows that computations like addition between tensors with different data types will fail. In the error message, the code is complaining about the types. Let's look at this same process with the device. And here again, we have the same story. This time in the error message, the code expected a torch.long tensor but found a torch.cuda.long tensor. 
That's the GPU version. Keep this issue in mind as we move forward in this series. It's super important and you'll probably run into it now and then. So let's look now at some common ways of creating PyTorch tensors using data. There are four primary ways of creating tensor objects with data in PyTorch. Let's go ahead and create some data using a NumPy array. So let's create that, check the type. So we have a NumPy array and we'll use this NumPy array to create tensors using the four different ways. So let's look at each of these. They all accept array-like data structures like NumPy arrays and give us instances of the PyTorch tensor class. We'll begin by just creating a tensor with each of the operations and see what output we get. We'll start with the torch.tensor class constructor and we get back a torch tensor. Something to notice here is the data type. In the torch tensor that was returned, we have these decimal points, which indicate that these values are floats versus in our NumPy array, we have integers. Let's move on to this torch.tensor function with the lowercase t. The difference between these two is that the first one is the class constructor and this torch.tensor function with the lowercase t is what we call a factory function that builds tensor objects for us. So let's just run this code and we get the output. What stands out here is that our data type matches the input data in the NumPy array. We have integers and we even have our D type specified, which tells us that our data type is int32. In the next video, we'll go into great detail about the differences between these two. For now, Let's move on to the next one, torch.asTensor. And we get our output. And we notice here that this output is the same output that we got when we used the torch.tensor factory function. And finally, we'll look at torch.fromNumPy. And here we get the same output as the other two. So the oddball out here is the class constructor. The other functions all behave in the same way seemingly in the same way. There are some differences with these under the hood. We'll cover the differences between all of these operations and we'll look at the best options to use in the next video. For now, let's look at the creation options we have available without having any data beforehand. We have a few options that I wanna showcase here. The first one is torch.i. Even though the spelling of this function is EYE, the function returns the identity tensor, or better known as the identity matrix. To call this function, we just need to specify the number of rows we want. So in this case, we have two specified. So we'll just run this code and we get back a two dimensional tensor with ones down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. Next, we have a zeros function that we can call and we specify the length of each axis. The result of this call is a rank two tensor with two axes both of which have a length of two. And if we run along the last axis, the elements there are all zeros. And in a similar way, instead of getting zeros, we can ask to get a tensor of all ones. We can do the same thing, but with random values. So this is just a small subset of the different types of functions available in PyTorch where we can create a tensor without having any data beforehand. The main takeaway here is that we have two high level ways for creating tensors. We can do it using existing data or we can do it using predefined functions for creating tensors with common data values like zeros, ones, or randoms. If we are transforming existing data into a PyTorch tensor, the data must be numerical. And a lot of times we'll likely be working with NumPy arrays, especially when working with numerical data in Python. This is why PyTorch is super interoperable with NumPy to begin with. We'll see more about this interoperability in the next video. Keep an eye out for the next one because it's a must see and it'll keep you from making costly mistakes and running into confusion when transforming existing data into PyTorch tensors. This was just a quick intro to what's out there in terms of PyTorch tensors and creation options. For now, I highly recommend you check out the blog post for this video on deeplizzard.com and the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you can get exclusive Deep Lizard perks and rewards. Let us know in the comments if you're able to get these pieces of code to run yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. Deep learning is an algorithm inspired by how the human brain works. And as a result, it's an algorithm which has no theoretical limitations on what it can do. The more data you give it, and the more computation time you give it, the better it gets.